Texas Tech lands two massive offensive linemen via the portal. Who are they and what can Texas Tech fans expect in 2024 from these two? Plus an overall team's ranking update for the portal class of 2024 for your Red Raiders. Where do they rank nationally and within the new Big 12? Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxwell here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay in the know on your Texas Tech Red Raiders all year long, not just during the season. We're going to be talking about Texas Tech football during the offseason as well, whether that's film breakdowns from 2023, what we can expect from new position groups on this team in terms of the wide receivers, offensive line, quarterback, running back, Everything in between, we've got you covered right here on the most engaging Texas Tech community on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast channel. And speaking of the offense in 2024, do you think it's going to be better? Just a simple why for yes or in for no. There was a lot of injuries last year, and I know I've seen a lot of people in the comments say, RC, I'll believe it when I see it, whether you're a skeptic of you know Kitley, whether you're skeptical of Baron Morton at the quarterback position, the offensive line, wide receivers, whatever it may be. I'm not personally, but hey, I want to hear y'all's opinion. Let me know on the pinned comment below by a simple why for yes or in for no if you think the Texas Tech offense will be better in 2024. All right, let's get to these two massive portal additions for the Red Raiders. And by massive, I mean these dudes are massive individuals. We'll start with the Middle Tennessee State offensive lineman, Sterling Porcher. He goes from being a blue, red, uh, blue Raider to a Red Raider. Hard for me to say, but he's got one year of eligibility left. He is 6'4", 305 pounds, and he started 25 consecutive games out there in Murfreesboro for the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders. His offer list, pretty solid when you look at it. He had Power 5 offers from schools like Arizona State, a new Big 12 foe. You got Baylor, well, obviously a Big 12 foe. Then you got Memphis, Syracuse, and others as well. He was a JUCO product before he had to, headed to Murfreesboro and played out at Middle Tennessee State. He will be in the running to potentially be the starting left tackle for the Red Raiders next season. Another massive offensive line commitment, this one coming on signing day, is Saddleback College offensive lineman Maurice Rodriguez. And this isn't just a commitment. He has officially signed the dotted line uh, for the Red Raiders. 6'7", 325 pounds, two years of eligibility left. Listen to this offer list in the schools that Texas Tech beat out for his services. First and foremost, you got USC. He took a visit there. UCLA, Georgia, Florida, and there's a few others as well. That's a hell of a list to beat out. And he actually went on visits to USC, Georgia. And then the other one was Texas Tech. He actually visited the Red Raiders at the beginning of December, the weekend of December 1st through the 3rd. This is a massive deal for Texas Tech. He is one of those guys where when you watch his film, he's just a dog. I mean, he's playing at the JUCO level. I get it. He's 6'7", 325. But he's one of those offensive linemen that carries his blocks to the second level. It almost like there's a couple of blocks on film where I'm watching him. And it's like Michael Orr in the blind side. Remember that scene where he just carries the guy into the bus parking lot? It almost feels like he's doing that a couple of times to these JUCO guys. He's a massive portal addition for Texas Tech for the sheer standpoint of he's got two years left. He could potentially come in and play that left tackle spot if he wins it out. There's a lot of competition there. And that's what I like to see from Porcher as well as Rodriguez. They're okay with the competition aspect of things. These offensive linemen coming in, they're okay with the competition aspect of things for Texas Tech because as we've mentioned numerous times here on this channel, the Red Raiders had to overhaul their offensive line. And these two guys go a long way in doing that, but so do guys like Scurry. You obviously add a guy like Carter at the right guard spot. They've done a phenomenal job, have the Red Raiders so far, and really addressing the needs that they had to pinpoint on the offensive side of the football. And as everybody knows that watched Texas Tech football in 2023, that was the offensive line and the wide receiver group. And they have added some pivotal players there. Obviously, in the wide receiver group, we're talking about the Josh Kellys of the world, Caleb Payday Douglas. Micah Hudson has officially signed the dotted line for his NLI. And then on the offensive line, I've already gone through some names. And you get a couple of guys back. Caleb Rogers probably shifts inside to center. Then you got Ty Buchanan over at right tackle. Left tackle is going to be a heavy competition. And really, every position will be on the offensive line with more bona fide favorites uh, for those other four positions on the offensive line. But left tackle, 
you are going to see a ton of competition. Rodriguez will be in the mix for that. So will Porcher and a couple of other guys as well. And that's something that Texas Tech hasn't had a lot of in previous seasons. Offensive line depth and competition for it. It felt like more moving into the season. We had a clear cut. Okay, these guys are starting and there's a clear drop off for certain positions right on the offensive line. That's not going to be the case in 2024 and probably moving forward with guys like Ellis Davis. Uh, you got Nick there. Uh, there's multiple other guys that are going to have an impact on that offensive line and there won't be a significant drop off from the starters to the depth. And that is critical for Texas Tech because we've seen some of those injuries play and be really impactful in terms of what Texas Tech can do offensively. I don't think it's going to be the case moving forward, but that's where Texas Tech stands right now. And again, you add guys like Porter and Rodriguez to that competition. That's big for the Red Raiders moving forward. Now, here are the 2024 Texas Tech Transfer Portal team rankings updates. These are from 24-7, Rivals, and on three. We'll start with 24-7. They have the Red Raiders as the sixth ranked national class when it comes to the portal class of 2024. The only two teams ahead of them in the Big 12 is Colorado. I think everybody expects that from Dion and then TCU as well. Now, Rivals has the Red Raiders as the fifth best portal class for 2024 with two teams being in front of them in the Big 12. Colorado, obviously the one they're going to be ahead of everybody because they're the number one class right now in the portal. Them and Ole Miss are fighting it out. And then you've got Arizona State, the Sun Devils, another new Big 12 team ahead of the Red Raiders. On three has Texas Tech ranked as the 12th best transfer portal class. So a significant drop there compared to the other two in terms of rivals in 24-7 sports. But on three has Texas Tech ranked as the second Big 12 school, only behind Colorado. So you kind of look at that again, you're in that five to 12 range, but really five to six and maybe eight will move up now on, on three with these two portal additions and everything like that. But it's interesting to see a lot of Big 12 schools are in the mix right now in terms of top of the portal. You got TCU, Arizona State, obviously the Colorado Buffaloes, and Texas Tech is right in there as well. Uh, but Texas Tech has done a phenomenal job at pinpointing and addressing needs in the portal, and they've done so at the two positions that I think needed the biggest overhaul. And I've said this before the portal even started, before we even knew where Texas Tech was going to go bowling and then inevitably won their bowl game against Cal 34-14. They had to go into this offseason and pinpoint and get guys that can make an impact both in the offensive line group and the wide receiver group. And they've done that at a very high level. Obviously, I've named some of the names in terms of Josh Kelly, Caleb Paley, Douglas at the wide receiver spot. But you add guys like Porcher and then you add another guy and Maurice Rodriguez, who is an absolutely massive human being, 6'7", 325. Those two guys are going to be in the running to potentially be the left tackle for the Red Raiders in 2024. And that's something we haven't seen, as I just previously mentioned. There is not going to be that significant drop off from starters to debt pieces on the offensive line for Texas Tech in 2024. And that is going to be massive for the Red Raiders moving forward, because now you can just add in recruiting to already good pieces that you have in that offensive line. Coach Hamby has got to be one of the more happy guys in that Red Raider uh, football facility right now in terms of some of the guys they're bringing in, not only in the portal, but also via the high school ranks like Ellis Davis, Holton Hendricks, and others as well. So Texas Tech doing a phenomenal job on the recruiting trail, and they have done so here, landing two massive offensive linemen via the portal in Middle Tennessee State offensive lineman Sterling Porcher, and then you've got Saddleback College, a JUCO offensive lineman, and Maurice Rodriguez, a guy that had Georgia, Florida, USC, UCLA offers, and many, many more of the Red Raiders beat them out and get the services of Rodriguez from Saddleback Juco. I am RC Maxfield reminding you one more time, if you haven't already, let me know down on the pinned comment below. Do you think the Texas Tech offense will be better in 2024? Just a simple Y for yes or N for no. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe and notification bell to stay in the know on Texas Tech football all year long, not just during the season. We've got you covered during the offseason as well, during the recruiting cycle of things, as well as film breakdowns, position breakdowns, and so much more. So join the most engaging Texas Tech community here on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast right now.